Who are the Houthis and what propelled them to prominence in Yemen? Let's dive into the story of an armed group known as the Houthis, or Ansar Allah, meaning supporters of God. Their journey begins in the 1990s, but it wasn't until two decades later that they really rose to the forefront of Yemen's political stage. In 2014, the Houthis rebelled against the Yemeni government. This rebellion was not just a political statement, but a seismic shift that caused the government to step down, igniting a devastating humanitarian crisis. The effects of this crisis still ripple through Yemen to this day, a testament to the power and influence of the Houthis. The group's reach extends far beyond the battlefield. They have taken control of most parts of Yemen, including the capital, Sana'a, and some of the western and northern areas close to Saudi Arabia. This control is not merely geographical, it's political, social, and in many ways, cultural. However, it's important to note that the Houthis are not mere pawns on a geopolitical chessboard. Yes, they have received backing from Iran, but they are far from being Iranian proxies. They boast their own base, have their own interests, and harbor their own ambitions. In the next scenes, we'll delve into the Houthis' attacks on Red Sea ships and the implications of these attacks. But for now, let's pause to remember this. The story of the Houthis is not simply one of rebellion and control. It's a tale of a group with its own identity, its own agenda, and its own indomitable will. Why are the Houthis attacking ships in the Red Sea? The Houthis, officially known as Ansar Allah, have been making headlines with their attacks on commercial and military ships, particularly those with potential Israeli links. Their stated reason? Primarily to pressure Israel into ending its war on Gaza. They made their point loud and clear when they commandeered a cargo ship named the Galaxy Leader in mid-November, transforming it into an unexpected tourist attraction for their fellow Yemenis. But their demands don't stop at ceasing hostilities. The Houthis are also calling for an increase in humanitarian aid to be allowed into Gaza. Houthi chief negotiator and spokesperson Mohammed Abdul Salam has been vocal about this, stating that they will not stand idle in the face of aggression and siege. He has also assured that their targeting of Israel-linked ships will continue, regardless of the retaliatory strikes by the US and UK. Yet these attacks serve more than just their proclaimed purpose. They also play a substantial role domestically for the Houthis. In the wake of these attacks, the group has seen a sharp increase in recruitment, fueled by popular support for the people of Gaza. These actions, coupled with the response from major global powers, force other countries and governments into a negotiation, giving the Houthis a semblance of legitimacy at a time when they are not internationally recognized as Yemen's government. At the same time, the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, accounting for 30% of the world's container ship traffic, have been heavily impacted. Several shipping companies have had to divert their vessels across Africa, resulting in significant disruptions to global trade. These attacks are more than just a show of force. They serve multiple strategic purposes for the Houthis. As we delve further into this complex issue, we'll see how these developments could potentially affect Yemen's fragile peace and the broader geopolitics of the region. What are the potential consequences of these attacks on the fragile peace in Yemen? This is a question that analysts and political enthusiasts alike are pondering. The Houthi attacks on Red Sea ships pose a significant threat to the tentative peace within Yemen, particularly as ceasefire talks, after a decade-long war, seem to be gaining traction. The United Nations announced serious progress in negotiations in late December. However, experts warn that Houthi activity in the Red Sea could derail a final deal. The attacks could potentially trigger a US military response, which in turn could unravel the fragile ceasefire conditions. Furthermore, the Houthis, bolstered by increased recruitment due to the popular support they've garnered, could be tempted to expand their ambitions. In recent weeks, the Houthis have deployed 50,000 troops around Marib, the last stronghold of the internationally recognized Yemeni government. This is a clear indication of their growing military strength and their possible plans for expansion. However, not all is bleak. Some analysts suggest that the Houthis might also seek closer relations with Saudi Arabia. This could serve as a counterbalancing factor, holding them back from actions that escalate tensions within Yemen. Such a move could potentially help stabilize the region and aid in the peace process. In conclusion, the actions of the Houthis have wide-ranging implications, 
not just for Yemen, but for the wider region and global shipping routes. Their actions are not only shaping the future of Yemen, but also influencing the geopolitical landscape of the region and beyond.